award-winning Big Ideas for a Small Planet, Season 1, is now available on DVD. For more information, go to SundanceChannel.com. Millennia ago, we depended on the water that we could get from rivers and the water that we could collect from rain to sustain our agricultural societies and our growing cities. Rain is pretty pure stuff. The stuff that falls from the sky has been naturally filtered by the hydrologic cycle. And if we can figure out ways to effectively capture rain and keep it pure, it's perfectly reasonable to consider using that water as drinking water. My name is Tim Pope, and I build rainfall catchment systems in the San Juan Islands. These islands have poor wells, a lot of saltwater intrusion, a lot of homes are going dry. Rainfall catchment systems are basically where rainfall is collected from a hard surface roof with a self-contained storage system so you can have a reliable, safe form of drinking water. This is one of my favorite projects, one of my best projects, I think. On a community like San Juan Island, we have to truck water in ourselves. So uh, this is an opportunity for us to have a supply of water available to us all the time that we know when we need it, it's there. So today we're gonna simulate some rain on our roof. We'll use our fire engine and rain water we've already collected to, uh, to through a fire hose, we'll squirt that onto the roof. This is how rainfall catchment works. Water falls on the roof, drops into the gutters, goes into an underground pipe that is going to a pumping station, goes to the 30,000 gallon storage tank where it's held. Fire truck can back up the storage tank, fill their tank and go. In some cities, as much as half the water could come from rainfall. This year has been the worst drought year on record in Southern California. But despite that, just a few weeks back, it rained one inch. Had we deployed a network of a million cisterns, we could have captured 7.6 billion gallons of water in that same one inch rainfall. That's what's possible if we tackle this thing right. Hi, kids. Hey, Tim. Let's go down and take a look at the tank and see that everything is copacetic and that it's where we left it. Teddy and Alice Dean's house is an example of a full use system. Their well goes dry at the drop of a hat or one load of laundry. So they basically live on their 15,000 gallon system and we're filtering and disinfecting to supply their full household needs. I'm a fan <laughs> of retaining water, that's right. <laughs> Let's see if you got any water in this Yeah. Tank. We better have water in this tank. Yeah, I know. There's some water. There it is. So we're there? more than a third full. Right and in here. So somewhere. this isn't bad for September. No, no. No, no, I feel fine. We originally hadn't intended to have a water catchment system. We hadn't really thought about it. As I recall, the first time the well went dry, I was uh, in the middle of washing my hair and I had shampoo all over my head, and he was in the next building, and um, that pretty much convinced yeah, me we, so we, we could do we, a little something we different. We had to do something more. Well, let's just get this filter changed. Alice, have you ever seen this change? I have never seen you change the well, filters. Well, then it's, then it's time. We've got great filtration system, and it makes the water incredibly pure, incredibly tasty. It's wonderful for showers. It's very soft. These should last four to six months in an average family. Water comes in the outside, is forced through to the core of the filter. The water catchment system increases tremendously our quality of life. That's the bottom line. I would like to think my systems are making a difference. I would like to think that my kids, when they have kids, 
might be able to come up with a safe drink of water for him because we have to do something. People are slowly waking up to the water challenges that face us, but they're going to get alarm calls when the quality of their water goes.